Some are very good at um, fast action. Some are very good at uh, subtle um, acting. Okay. It's her gasp makes him turn round. Ah, I see. He's sort of dreaming and he's sort of like, sort of, ooh. Yeah, it's, yes, okay. He's a bit too yeah, it's aware. Too, yes, that's right. And so by the time she's up here, he's beginning to turn. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. okay, yeah, fine. The animated characters and the backgrounds they move across have to be designed to best create the atmosphere of the story. Well, I'm responsible for the look of the film. I choose all the colours for the characters and um, design how they're going to look. The colour of Tilly and the bear is determined very much by the book. Um, but I did want the colours to be a little bit stronger. They're very luscious, edible colours because I think this really appeals to children. Make that more reflective up there. I coordinate with all um, the background artists. I tell them the colours I want them to use, the way I want them to draw up the backgrounds. I think these colours could be just slightly more intense, the sky colours. It's like more okay. turquoise, more blue. Mm. Yeah, it's great, it's lovely. Lovely backgrounds, thank you. Okay. Yeah. While the animation was being completed, the search to find the little girl to sing the part of Tilly began. We were looking for someone who would reproduce the character of the little girl who after all is bossy, uh, knows her own mind and is quite happy to kick polar bears around. So we wanted to try and get that in the voice of whoever sang the song in the film. We went to a school which uh, specialises in music and drama. And the um, music teacher had selected five girls who they thought were suitable. Somewhere a star shines for it's very difficult choosing the little girl because uh, we didn't want anybody too mature. And apparently little girls' voices aren't like little boys' voices. They aren't really any good as singers until they're about 15, because that's too old. I listened to five girls, but out of those five girls, Arabella was the best. First track. The whole thing. The whole thing from the top. It is a very uh, sort of scary thing to be put in front of a microphone if, if you've never done it before and be, and be told to sing absolutely perfectly. Nobody, nobody can do it, not even top rate professionals who've been, been around for years. We'll wait to you occasionally. This, this R that you've got, Howard, is this just a. Sort of you have to try and, and get um, young. Uh, boys or girls into, into a very relaxed situation so that they'll feel good and they can sing at their best. And, and that's quite a problem. And when I bring you in, you start to sing, just like we did at the piano. So. OK, give us a track, could you? Here comes the click now. Two, three. La, 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 la. la, la. Yes. What, the singing? Yeah. Well, we can leave it. Um, like I find the whole process of doing a film is, you, you know, you have to listen to input from all sides and somehow all the elements will come together. So we had the two tenors singing and it wasn't right. It wasn't, it wasn't eerie enough. When we did the two tenors, we found it was too similar, a too similar sound, and we couldn't differentiate between one band and another. Oh. 
So we discussed it with Howard and we went back to the original concept, which was a bass and a tenor. In traditional animation, special effects are used for such things as snow and water. But here, they were essential to create one of the main characters, the Star Bear. Initially, we conceived the Star Bear as an artwork piece. And then I think it dawned on people, everybody that we could make it sparkle, we could make it move about, and make it more of a ghost with a solid centre. I wanted him to be like a chunk of night sky but also he should glow, he should project light. And that gave him a very dramatic theatrical quality. And apart from that, he's, he's, uh, his interior is all glittery stars. A running test of, uh... That's pretty good, you know. He hasn't got any sparkles, though, has he? Well, it's very difficult with something like this because you know what you want and you've got to communicate what you want, so it's very much a trial and error process, really. Agreed. We agree. We agree. I mean, we agree, we agree. And also, we had to try and keep it simple because um, we had to keep the uh, runs under camera as uh, little as possible. It took a very long time to test it, but we have something like eight exposures of film to do on each of these scenes, which is you stop, you wind back, you stop, you wind back, you stop each time. Um, so something like... Um, a four-second sequence of Star Bear could take two and a half days to shoot. It's not a sort of a single-minded one person going off and doing something sort of job. It's a collaboration all the way down the line. It's an animator's job that has been well done, and I put the overlaying stuff on the top of it. But it could well be that I can improve his vision of it. While all the animators are starting to get all their material together and, and draw it all and eventually colour it and trace and paint it and all the other processes, I'm starting to orchestrate it. And one finds an orchestra which you hope will reflect all the things that happen within the film. So I, I particularly wanted a tuba to reflect the bear-like qualities. So I used that as a sort of uh, base for the whole thing. And, and the whole orchestra builds up from that big tuba sound. <laughs> It's great fun orchestrator because in a way you've you've actually done all the hard work and and it's ra rather like drawing when you write for piano it's like drawing um, a sketch with a pencil and orchestrating is like is like doing the full oil painting of it. I've always found that when you use real effects like lorries going up hills or taps running, um, you actually start to exist in the real world. Whereas the art of cartoon films actually is the art of fantasy. And I think if you can create the whole world out of sound, rather than use a real recording, I, I think it, it, uh, it somehow keeps you within that fantasy world. This is a dripping towel. When that's transferred to an orchestral score, you get a very rich sound, which sounds like brushing. 